Good morning, everybody, and I lift my voice, yes, Lord, to worship, worship you, oh, my soul. He rejoiced, take joy, my King, in what you hear. And let it be a sweet sound in your ear. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. What's up, everybody? Pop, pop. I love God today. I love you. 
Welcome to the Daniel Garrett Ministry uh, Brief Meditative Moment where we do proclamation, prayer, and praise. Y'all, y'all know I'm on break, right? <laughs> y'all know I told y'all that I was not gonna leave y'all by yourself, right? And so I listen. I, I know I told you I could not handle all the technology while I was on the road, but listen, I got you. I got you. I got you. Listen, y'all see the guy over there in the nice dash? He's been a bless y'all, baby. He's been a bless y'all. He's been a bless y'all. <laughs> right, we got a little worship here. I got to make some announcements, and I'm going to let him go, right? Uh, Lord Jesus, here we go. Let's listen to worship real quick. Oh. We exalt thee. We exalt thee. We exalt thee. Oh God, you say it with me. Yeah, 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 yeah. We exalt thee, yes, Lord. We exalt thee. We exalt thee. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God. Your turn now. You sing it. I'm not going to sing it. You help me sing it. Say, we. We. Your turn. Y'all yeah. better be typing on the screen or something. <laughs> greet somebody. I can't do it today. So greet somebody. Tell them good morning. Encourage somebody. Huh? I am excited, baby. I'm excited. I, I promise you God is doing a new thing uh, and all the technology and everything else. I'm excited that we have guests today. Let me turn this down a little bit so I can hear. Let me turn this down a little bit so I can hear. It ain't going down. I guess y'all like it too much. That is good morning, everybody. Listen, it's a great day to be alive, great day to be in fellowship with such people as yourselves. I'm excited. Do me a quick favor go ahead and like, comment, share, love. Hit those hearts. Lady Garrett told me to tell y'all, y'all ain't been hitting them hearts. Okay, so I, I don't want to be in trouble. The co host said that you all are not hitting those hearts. So I need y'all to hit those hearts, right? If you're on YouTube and have not subscribed, if you're a visitor, because uh, because our guest is on, listen, I need you to subscribe to Daniel Garrett Ministries. Come on now, hit that thumbs up uh, every time you see us come on, and hit that bell for the uh, the bell notification. So whenever we post, whenever we go live, you'll get it. Now you get a double blessing if you're watching the Daniel Garrett Ministries because you get spirit redeemed stuff too. Hello, it is the church that I pastor, the greatest church. Uh, who just as that thank God has allowed us to see 26 years, uh, uh, and whole month of June we're celebrating. Whole month of June we're celebrating. And so I'm thankful to uh, all those who have come already and preached the word of God. Uh, and uh, we close out. We close out uh, on this fourth Sunday. We close out, guys. We close out. And so I'm uh, looking forward to my son coming. Pastor Texas McKinney and True Vine will be in the room. Uh, and I'm looking forward to having True Vine in the room. All right, let me do some quick things. So, uh, that's, um, Bishop Johnson says it some way. I just don't know how to say it now. But anyway, well, he does this thing. Uh, but let me... <laughs> Y'all know I'm crazy. Listen, I want to point out COVID is still here. You all saw it in the intro. COVID is still here. So I need y'all to put masks on your face when you're around people. Keep a safe distance around people. I need y'all to wash your hands with soap, right? Do I need to say it? Zestfully clean. Get to some down antibacterial soap. Listen, I need you. If you're not being vaccinated, uh, make sure you make sure you get you some uh, antibiotics in your system, some blackberry or uh, some black seed oil, some elderberry, some zinc. All right, get that stuff in you. I need you to understand that we got to stay focused, be true to the foundation of our faith, be obedient to our assignment, be conscious, courageous, and consistent in our Christianity, uh, unite with other believers, and serving God by what? Serving man. I need us to stay active, guys. In order for us to be who God has called to be, we have to be active. And those three ways are we're active in our participation. That's why you're sharing this right now. You're active in your giving. You're going to have a moment to give. That's why we're um, active in our witness. We got to tell somebody about the goodness of the Lord. Here's one last thing, and y'all know what it is. There's six things that we stand on when it comes to prayer. Uh, and prayer gives us access to the ear and the heart of God. It, it focuses the mind of the believer. It provides uh, uh, intimacy with God. It promotes well-rounded prosperity. And y'all know my favorite Prayer will push you into a praise. I love to praise him. How about you? Okay, so listen, it's been, a uh, man, listen, God has been blessing us through this whole series of having guests come on, and we have another one come on right now. Another one's coming on right now. Um, he's my brother. He's my bishop. He's my friend. Uh, he's, um, he's the one who keeps it real with me. He don't care how I feel. 
He don't care uh, what I'm going through. He is a tyrant. I mean, Holy Ghost, how to think of Jesus. He's, 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 he's a trendsetter. Uh, he is the pastor of the Armor Institute. <laughs> I mean, pastor of the Armor of God Ministries in Naperville. And he is the president of Armor Institute uh, educational journey that I'm on right now. While I'm finishing my bachelor's, I'm also working toward my master's degree so I can be a student at the Armor Institute. Hello. Uh, so uh, we thank God for Bishop Michael Johnson. Bishop, can you hear us this morning? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I can hear you fine. You're laughing at me, so you got <laughs> you, you laughing. So you Lord have mercy. Listen, guys, before I give it to him, I'm I'm not I can't listen, I would not be able to do this stuff while I'm while I'm on my, my break, uh, without pastors and bishops and preachers and teachers that have been helping me to get a break. So I'm thankful yes, to these people. Under his name, you see his cash app. I need y'all to bless this man of God. He's not asking for it. I had to actually go through his email to search for his cash app. So I need y'all to bless this man of God. Thank you so much. And again, thank you so much. We'll talk about giving to DGM at the end, but I, whenever you see this pop up, take, matter of fact, take a screenshot of it now. Hello, take a screenshot of it now so that you can uh, make sure you got what you got. All right, I didn't ate up too much of this time, so we might go over a little bit. Y'all be all right, I promise you. Bishop Johnson, I'm about to kill this music. And, uh, and uh, let you do what you do, because I believe that God has a word for us from you today. Uh, and I, it's, it, it's in your hands. <laughs> uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, first of all, thank you for having me, uh, Bishop Garrett. Uh, this is uh, uh, an honor. You know, whenever uh, I am asked uh, to come and speak, it is always an assignment uh, that I accept with the spirit of humility. So thank you, sir. Thank you. You know, I just... You know, in this season, um, uh, we are contending with a, a myriad of things that uh, might even promote these valley experiences that we're uh, that we seem to be going through. It seems like the the kingdom is under attack, and uh, things it, it puts us in these exigent and destitute situations. It seems like, uh, but I, I believe in my heart that. Uh, God still sits on the throne. Uh, Jesus is still interceding on our behalf. And, and so in, in order to grasp the brevity uh, of these lessons that we have to contend with, I believe it's important to just discuss the things that are important. So this morning, I, I want to talk about um, uh, this just briefly, uh, a topic entitled readiness for the Sith readiness for the sift so so one of the most difficult parts of, of being a christian i believe is encountering these valley experiences right we there are uh these are the experiences that the preacher tells us is just a test uh right or or mama tells us hey baby it's all part of life right or our friends tell us hey man i know what you're going through uh while we're encountering these experiences even though they have no clue no idea of what we're really going through because many of us suffer in silence don't we uh so we're supposed to be able to deal with these experiences because hey we're, we're christians right uh and and god forbid we encounter these experiences in in front of the world um our, our response is supposed to be old testament tough Right. I, I believe in our responses. We think we're fooling the world and, and putting on a face for God, but but we're really only fooling ourselves. And sometimes life can be unbearably overbearing uh, and overwhelming. Uh, you may have a day where you're late for work on the day that you have a meeting with your boss's boss. Right. Let me set the stage in the scenario for you. Uh, uh, you get in your car and your car won't start. You have no money for an Uber because it's Thursday before payday. Come on, who am I talking to? You live 40 miles from work, so there's no hope of getting a ride with a coworker. And while you're sitting in the silence of your frustration, everything you've been ignoring starts to scream at you. Right? Uh, uh, they, they took your income tax for child support. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. Your whole check has to go to your landlord because you're nursing uh, a, an eviction notice. Uh, and, and you won't have money to fix your car if you give the money to the landlord. So, so you're on your last pack of ramen noodles. Your pride won't let you borrow from anyone because you have everybody fooled into thinking that you're balling. 
I'm talking to somebody. And you're even more upset because that $100 you gave to the church this past Sunday, because the pastor said, I need all my blessed people who can give $100 to put it in the air and come down the center aisle. And here you come, you did, because you wanted that five minutes of attention. And now here you sit in tears, wondering if you'll lose your job, which means you'll lose your apartment. And you can't even buy a breakfast sandwich and you can't even tell anybody. Somebody confirm if they know what I'm talking about. So so what are the most um, uh, often occurring questions that I get as a pastor is, why does God allow bad stuff to happen to good people? Good friend of mine, strong and always on the go for most of his life, uh, became bedridden after a medical procedure. But for the last year and a half of his life, to him, uh, those that time has been the most significant, even though he's hardly had any control of his body from the neck down. If, if God loves us, how can he justify or sometimes even send overwhelming odds and difficulties our way? We look in the Bible for answers and find words like uh, in 1 Peter uh, 1 and 7, where it says, the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Christ. We want to believe these words. It's, it's, it's one thing to talk about waiting on the Lord and being of good courage, but it's another thing entirely to live it out. Right? Angels may weep because of all the suffering in the world, but a father weeps because his daughter was killed in a drive-by shooting while he was in a, a drive through at McDonald's, right? And he looks into her casket while he's alone viewing the body and all he can ask is, why God, why? Why does this have to happen? In, in the Sudan, in Africa, millions have been murdered and enslaved in this day. And in 2004, a tsunami killed 200 and 80,000 people, I'm going somewhere. Malaria still kills more than 2 million people every year and the majority of them are African children. Speaking of children, more than 26,500 children die every day around the world. So if you do the math, that's 18 children every minute. Children, not adults, children. We, we memorialize events like 9-11, where 2,973 people died uh, in this act of terrorism, but twice that number died every day for 100 days straight during the genocide in Rwanda in 1994. Again, we question why. So, so if, if you all have your Bibles, very quickly, if you just turn to the book of, of Luke, uh, the 22nd chapter, I'm gonna be real brief with this, right? So so while you're getting that, let me just set the, set the stage for you. It's, it's, it's right before the Passover, uh, which celebrates Moses being used by God to free the slaves uh, out of captivity in Egypt. And the chief priests were looking for Jesus to kill him because they feared that the people were beginning to follow Jesus instead of them. So Judas went and made a deal with the priest to betray Jesus and now that plan was in motion, right? But Jesus knew already. He sends Peter and John to prepare a place for them to celebrate the Passover. And after they had followed Jesus's orders, they gathered there and sat down with the apostles for the Last Supper and the, and the first Eucharist and, and the, the first communion. That's what that was. So after the supper, Jesus announces that one of them is going to betray him. Uh, this called the ruckus in, in the upper room, or, or uh, as the Bible puts it, there was strife among them, the Bible says, which means that uh, they were arguing violently between each other about who the greatest was. So, so Jesus gives an answer in the form of a parable, and, and he says, he who is greatest among you should be a servant, and, and that their reward for this act of humility would be a seat at the table in the kingdom, which is what we all want, right? But then the atmosphere shifts 
And Jesus looks at Peter's and says these words in the Bible, from the Bible, this is what it says. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I pray for thee that thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brother. So he says Simon's name twice. That's important. He says his name twice because he has to drive home the intimate truth that while he loves him, he has something really hard to tell him. And this concept of getting somebody's attention is important to note as we read uh, that Jesus called Peter's name twice, Simon, Simon, right? He needs his friend's attention. So, so he uses his formal name even after he had already renamed him Peter in Mark 16, after he had asked the disciples, why, who do men say I am? And, and Peter gave the right answer. But listen to what Jesus told him right here. This is what the Bible says. It says, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father in heaven. I also say to you that you are Peter, and upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Then listen to the, what the word says in Revelation 2.17. Jesus is speaking to his disciples and he says this. He says, to him who overcomes, to him I will give some of the hidden manna and I will give him a white stone and a new name written on that stone, which no one knows but him who receives it. So whatever name is written on that stone is the name that God chose for you. It, it's just like when God sent the angel to tell Mary to call the Savior Jesus. God did it. And you know why God did it? Because Mary didn't know the importance of that name. She's just a teenage girl. She, had, she didn't know. And she also didn't know the power of his destiny, right? So, so Jesus named Simon Peter, which means rock. So Simon would be that rock, not be Simon, which means supplant or replace, because his destiny wasn't to replace the rock. His, his destiny was to be the rock upon which Jesus built the church. So, so it's not just the name but the authority of Jesus that makes everything kneel, right? And that's why without any authority, Satan is forced to use deception and illusion, which is why one of his names is tempter. And, and that's why Satan had to ask to sift Peter. But humanity doesn't realize how oxymoronic it is that, that it is a request coming from Satan, who is reduced to having to ask for it in the first place. Y'all will get that later on in your birthday. So you can't steal anything that you have to ask for first. Y'all get that? So, so Satan's requests and God's permissions have price tags that we have to pay. But even in this, we must always remember what it says in 1 Corinthians, uh, the 10th chapter, the 13th verse. Listen to what it says here in the word. It says, God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. So, so in telling Peter about Satan's demand of him, he's showing a level of love that is often hard for us to accept. He's essentially saying to him, this experience is about to challenge you. Brace yourself. And remember, I'm with you, but brace yourself, right? He told him that earlier in the word in Matthew 18 and 7. Listen to what it says. It says, woe to the world because of the things that cause people to stumble. Such things must come. It has to happen. It's of necessity. You can't escape it. You have to go through the valley to get to the mountain. That's the pathway. That's the waypoint. There's no other way around it. Just like he said to him uh, in Matthew 28 and 20. Listen to what the word says. He says, and lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. So, so his respect for us and his permission for us to make our own decisions 
sometimes comes as a shock to us because we constantly want God to intercede and block things. But like Job said in Job 2 and 10, listen to what the word says. It says, shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? So, so, so let's get to this sifting and, and, and then let's close this out. You know, sifting is the violent it's the violent process of separating the useful from the unnecessary, right? That the crushing and sorting of something whole for the purpose of isolating its nourishing core from the cage that traps it. So, so in the case of wheat, first they pulled the kernels violently from the stalk. In, in Jesus' time, they were repeatedly beat against a rock by hand and smashed between two stones. Y'all ready for the sifting process? Now, now, now they use iron rollers, then a system of vacuums uh, uh, and pulls them into a venting system that looks like an accordion, right? Which opens and closes violently. The word tribulation, listen to this. The word tribulation is rooted in the agrarian reference to sifting because it's the tribulum which is a threshing sledge uh, uh, with iron teeth embedded in it. And its only purpose is to remove the husk of the grain by tearing it away. Some of these things need to be ripped out of our lives because they are no longer useful to us, not as believers. And what's left drops through a screen from the box, which sifts what is usable the chaff, the sticks, the rocks, the dirt, is all thrown away. We're no different. We have to be sifted. Y'all get that now? The, the, the spiritual principle of sifting is separation that produces something valuable. It's, it's like panning for gold. Y'all ever seen that? Uh, you have to unbury it, drown it with water, and shake, from, shake it from everything that's trying to hide it. Come on, y'all, before the value is revealed. And when it's revealed, it usually doesn't look like what it is. When you find gold in the river, it don't look like what it is. Right? So, so it, it has to go through more processes to reveal its value. That's why we have the ball mill. The ball mill is a large cylinder with a heavy spinning ball in the middle that's used in the gold refining process to reveal the gold that's hiding in the heavier nuggets. Even Satan understands the principle of sifting, but like everything else that God instituted, he creates a fake or a facsimile of it in an effort to defile it. How do we know this? Because his motivation is to separate us from the love of God by shaking us from our foundation, people. But what he does not understand, what he means for evil, God means for good. And that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Nothing, right? Now, don't get it twisted. As disobedient children, oftentimes while God is walking with us, holding our hand, we get sidetracked by a distraction and pull our hand away from his like a toddler. We run toward the distraction and, and we're tripped along the way. We fall down. We lose our balance. Right? But what happens? The father runs to us, stretches forth his hand, picks us up, dusts us up, takes our hand and leads us away from the place where we fail and back to the path that he was leading us on. So the more I come to know God, the more impressed I am by him. Uh, uh, his insistence on human freedom of choice is so absolute that he has granted us the power to live in a place that he created like it doesn't belong to him and, and like he doesn't even exist all while blaspheming against him and, and crucifying his son. My God, taking his word out of context, opening businesses, I mean churches, right? In his name and operating contrary to his word, 
only love could stop him from destroying us. Y'all get that? So let's let him love us in the spirit that he desires to. Let's be obedient. Let's believe God for all of the goodness in our lives and let him enter in and take control. Amen. Let us pray. Let me let me just pray for you. Not to us, God, but but to your name we give glory for the sake of your steadfast love and your faithfulness. Who is the king of glory? Uh, your word says that kingship belongs to you. Uh, and, and for this, we praise and magnify your name, God. Father, we come before you admitting our great need for you. We would stretch our hands to thee for no other help we know. We've assembled together in unity and coagulation to offer ourselves for enrichment. We thank you for keeping us safe and bringing us forth for another opportunity to give you this offering, God. This offering is only powerful if you receive it. So we're going to check our hands and, and check our hearts right now, our speech to make sure they're clean so we can discuss your kingdom and how we can submit all the more to your will for our lives. Uh, we, we know that we can't achieve this by our own righteousness, but by the work that you authored and, and, and the work that Christ finished. Keep our minds and our hearts focused on that not on how differently we may approach an emerging theological idea or presentation of a solution you've already offered. But please give us the ethos of Invictus and humility, not for us, God, but so we can execute your will with excellence. We're already yours. So we have nothing to prove to each other. So here's our offering. Combined with steadfast love, assembled with the gifts you've given us, may it reach you and be instrumental in setting the captives free. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. It's in your hands, Bishop Gary. Lord, I'm available to you. I have nothing to say, guys. This is unusual. <laughs> My will I give to you. <laughs> I'll do what you say. Use me, Lord, to show someone the way and enable me to say my soul is empty, and I am to you. <laughs> is there anybody on here? Anybody, anybody on here? Listen, this word, this word was a magnificent word for my life. I hope it was a magnificent word for your life. <laughs> Y'all know, I got something to say about everything, okay? I got something to say about everything. But this here, this thing, listen, it's that part. It, I was good. Y'all couldn't see me. I was over here tripping. When he says, open up businesses, I mean churches. <laughs> I want y'all to know I am no more good. Bishop, thank you so much, so much for just being you. Being you, there's nobody like you you are man you are amazing yes, and we appreciate you man listen guys if that were <laughs> i'm still stuck i'm still stuck <laughs> 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 i'm gonna cry y'all don't understand listen bless this man of god <laughs> bless this man of god everybody bless him that's his cash <laughs> If you don't have cash out, when you give to the ministry, make sure you send a note uh, so that our team can know to send that to him uh, uh, in another fashion. If you don't have cash out, uh, send it to the ministry. Listen, I hope this blessed you. Man, I'm telling y'all, it blessed it did me. I know that's not proper English, but it blessed it did. I mean, blessed it did me. And I'm so excited about what God is doing in and through us. Bishop, thank you so much. Listen, real quick, I know, I know we're over time, but Bishop, do me a favor. Talk about the Armour Institute real fast. Talk about the Armour Institute real fast. So the Armour Institute is a research institution in the seminary. Uh, we uh, launched in January of 2022. Uh, we have 
uh, four master's programs. Uh, we are going to confer our master's programs before we release our doctoral program. We are a graduate institution. Uh, and the purpose of it, you know, our mantra at the Institute is to inspire the people that inspire the kingdom. Uh, so my goal has always been to get preachers before they get behind the pulpit, give them the proper training that they need uh, so that when they are behind the pulpit, they are proficient as opposed to woefully inadequate. Uh, that is not an aspersion on the kingdom uh, as much as it is an encouragement to the kingdom and to those who aspire to preach. Uh, to go to school first. If you want to do nails, you got to go to school for two years. If you want to be an anesthesiologist, you got to go to school for 16 years. So the greatest vocation in human history, which is leading the lost to Christ and to the possibility of eternal life, don't you want to go to school before you start teaching people how to do that? So that's what we're here for. And while there is a plethora of institutions uh, to choose from, uh, you will not find uh, an institution more invested in your future than the Armour uh, Armor Institute. Visit us at thearmorinstitute.org. Armour is spelled A-R-M-O-U-R. -R. Look at our programs and, and you'll find uh, just about everything you need. Unlocking the Scriptures is a six-week continuing education course that we have coming up starting Tuesday, starting Tuesday. Uh, so uh, orientation is Tuesday. You still have time to register. Uh, come on and uh, let's let's uh, learn uh, something about Christ. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Uh, so do that. We hope to see you in class. Thank you, Bishop. Uh, you got to talk about this one, bro. Uh, Bishop, I'm sorry. You got you to talk about that one. Yes, That's sir. Yes, please. sir. So, so we are doing a, a four-week continuing education course that's entitled Her. Uh, women in the Bible who changed human history. It is time for us to tell uh, our sister story. For so long, uh, we have placed our sisters in a box, right? Um, and, and one of the things when I was writing the summary for this, I said, what can Jezebel, uh, the Bible's most devious queen, reveal about God's holiness? or his grace, or his mercy, or his power. What about Deborah, uh, the judge who led 10,000 Israelites into battle with the Canaanites? One thing is for sure, neither of these women could be placed in the box that the modern day church has worked diligently to lock women in today. So uh, these powerful women were leaders who emerged in, in times of great distress, uh, to lead and sometimes to carry out great wickedness. And, and there were dozens of them, dozens of women in the Bible. It's time to tell their story. Uh, so again, you can visit us at the armorinstitute.org. Click on the academics link. Uh, you'll see at the bottom of that page, uh, all of the um, uh, continuing education courses that we have coming. One of them is her, click on that. It's $99 uh, and it starts August 10th through the 31st. Uh, I, I assure you, you'll be blessed. Man. Thank you, Bishop. Bishop, Bishop thank you so much. Uh, guys, I know we're over our time. But look, uh, support Daniel Garrett Ministries. Information is right there on the bottom of your screenage. Uh, don't forget to support. Uh, make sure you take the snapshot of this here. And uh, make sure you see, uh, take care uh, uh, of your blessing to Bishop Johnson. And those who are on the app, you already know, you can just hit giving, the giving tab, and it will be off the chain for you. I love y'all. Y'all have a super fantastic day in Jesus. Let's, let's get out of here. One last time. One last time. Oh, 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 oh. oh, put your hands together. Give God, oh, Lord, yes. Oh, God, yes, Lord. Lord, we exalt you. We bless your name for your great, your awesome, your mighty, and we appreciate you for all that you are. Thank you for Bishop Johnson. Now, bless our day that you might be glorified through it all in Jesus' name. We do pray. Everybody, amen. I'll see y'all. Amen. Deuces. Deuces.